Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. Uh, this is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering IIT Kharagpur. We are in continuation of the week 4 lectures uh, in that series uh, in the total sequence the lecture number is 20. We will uh, learn Castiglianos theorem today that is very very popular uh, and uh, this is uh, some times it is said it is a variation of the uh, different energy methods only, but let us we will we'll, we'll try to try to establish the equation first and then we will solve a few example. Uh, before we start anything as usual we are supposed to recapitulate things. Uh, in this recapitulation we have uh, done history of aircraft and aerospace structural analysis, various types uh, of external loads, conceptual structural details, flight envelope and load factor we have done, shear and moment on wing and fuselage of an aircraft has also been covered. We have also done truss, plane truss uh, and also space truss or the space structures we have solved. And in last three lectures we have considered with many examples dummy load method and unit load method. And in this uh, week class we will uh, or this lecture we will try to understand or solve the series uh, sorry Castiglianos theorem and let us start that. So, Castiglianos theorem is the main topic and let us try to cover. So, uh, Castiglianos theorem uh, we let us try to establish first. We are considering again uh, one bar actually loaded by P of length A length sorry length L and cross section A. Uh, stress stress strain uh, or load def deflection curve is shown here. Now, uh, the strain energy uh, for a linear elastic body strain energy is equals to half P delta. Strain energy per unit volume we generally define as half of sigma into epsilon. And if we put those values for sigma and epsilon that gives us the value as equals to p square L by A e twice A e. Considering application of two loads P 1 and P 2 one after another, uh, we may have uh, three different uh, scenario in one first case that P 1 is applied first, P 2 next. P 2 is applied first, P 1 next and in the last case both are applied. Uh, simultaneously. So, let us see how the energy changes or how what is the net amount of energy and what is the relation between those energies. So, in the first case let us say it is U A P 1 first P 2 second. So, P 1 first means half of P 1 delta 1, P 2 comes next because of that the displacement is delta 2 that is half P 2 delta 2, but P 1 remains in the system that is the reason work done done by that P 1 is equals to P 1 delta. Similarly, if we go for the second one uh, the P 2 first and P 1 second half P 2 delta 2 for the first half P 1 delta 1 for the second one and then P 2 remains that is why P 2 and the second displacement uh, is delta 1. Similarly, if we go for the second uh, sorry loads acting simultaneously that means, P 1 plus P 2 is creating a displacement delta 1 plus delta 2. This, this scenario is uh, depicted here in this uh, with delta 1 P 1 corresponding to delta 1 P 2 corresponding to delta 2. The sequence is not shown there may be more many figures for that, but uh, I think these are easy and easily you can guess it. So, to do that we multiply those quantities and we 
see that p half of p 1 delta 1 plus half of p, p 2 delta 2 plus half of p 1 delta 1 plus p 2 delta 1 we get the total load. Now, since uh, we have a relation between the displacement and the applied load delta 1 is equals to p l by a e delta 1 is equals to p 1 l by a e delta 2 is equals to p 2 l by a e. From this relation we can easily find that that delta 1 by p 1 is equals to delta 2 by p 2. Now, if we use this relation if we do simple algebra a little bit with this 3 relation uh, you can easily prove that uh, you may consider that as a home assignment easily you can easily prove that this is the u a u b and u c are the same that means, uh, the sequence is not important while we apply the load. Strain energy does not depend on the order on which loads are applied. Okay. Consider a homogeneous isotropic linear elastic body in equilibrium under the action uh, of external forces P 1, P 2 and uh, so on as P n. When these loads act on the body, they will do external work and some strain energy say u is stored in the body. Now, let the load P n be increased by an amount delta P n. This is important. The strain energy will increase and hence the total final strain energy will become u because of those what is stated here and plus because of delta p n and delta p n is multiplied by the change rate of change uh, due to delta p n p n that is the reason del, uh, del u delta p n is the gradient multiplied by the delta p n. So, if we reverse the order as we have done in the previous case of application of the load that is if we apply delta p n first and then the loads p 1, p 2, 2 p n the final energy will remain unchanged that we have already proved. Let the deflection of the body in the direction of p n when delta p n is applied is equals to delta delta n. Small delta or variation small variation of delta of capital delta n. Applying the load in reverse order what do we have following the previous concept what we have done that uh, this this is half of delta p n delta delta n and this is uh, because the delta n is created by the n set of loads and that increases this and the energy u what we are not explicitly writing it because this was existing this is coming extra where delta n is the deflection under p n. Okay. Now, uh, neglecting the small terms that means, this particular term this is very very small both are very very small amount uh, and if we neglect that. So, the u f is equals to delta p n capital delta n plus u is equals to this one because in the previous case energy is this and that leads to that capital delta n is equals to del u del p n where u is the strain energy in equilibrium configuration. The deflection of any elastic this is known as the Castiglione's second theorem. We will see the theorems in the next slide. The deflection of any elastic structure in the direction of load acting on it is equal to the partial derivative of the total strain energy with respect to the load. So, the second theorem as let us read first then we will read the first one del u c del q y 
the partial derivative of the complementary strain energy with respect to any independent generalized force q y is equal to the generalized displacement small q y located at the force q y and in the direction q y. So, these two things are very very in important located at the force q y. and in the direction q y. So, uh, with that uh, it is better to see and this because uh, we, we consider why do we say the statement with respect to complementary energy first, because we have uh, seen in, in the first lecture of this week uh, this module that uh, if the relationship is a is not linear, uh, it is not linear elastic, the derivation partial derivation of complementary energy gives the displacement not the uh, strain energy. So, that is the reason uh, we say that first and then for a linear uh, elastic body as it is mentioned here, we can consider that del u del q capital Q y is equals to small q y displacement in the ith position in the direction of applied load q y is small q y. So, following that things we can also prove uh, in a different way uh, that is not in the scope of the study. So, you may refer advanced books for this, but let us learn that first theorem del u del q y is equals to small q y or the derivation with respect to the uh, displacement uh, gives us the force. For a, a stable system, the partial derivative of strain energy with respect to any independent generalized displacement q y is equal to the generalized force q y located at the displacement q y and in the direction of q y. So, uh, with this uh, it is just opposite to that. Uh, so, it is easy to remember the first theorem. Now, it is an important point to note here that the dummy load method and unit load methods are special method for solving deflection analysis problems and uh, they follow identically the Castiglianos theorem. So, uh, with this note uh, if you look at it, if you solve the problems carefully, if you look at it in many times you will understand, you will have the idea that the, these methods are not much different, but it is a, a, some variation of one is the some variation of the other. So, let us solve a problem, but uh, the problem is again a cantilever beam. In the cantilever beam, there are two loads applied at the tip. One is uh, vertically upward P and uh, a moment M. So, uh, it is asked that, uh, that what is the vertical deflection of point A as well as what is the slope at that point. Since M is there and since P is present there, we need not to apply any dummy load or unit load. We, if we consider derivative with respect to P of the energy, we will get the uh, vertical deflection. If we consider a partial derivative with respect to the m will get the slope. So, that is the reason this example is not very tough, it is very easy to understand and it explains the method very well. But what I would suggest that in the last three lectures whatever problems we have solved using dummy load method and unit load method, you better try to solve those methods using Castiglianos theorem. Let us solve this one. Again, this as I, I have mentioned at any section as it is given here, a section which is x apart, x is measured from this portion. Uh, the moment is this, 
P x and m and uh, it is a simply it is simply that u is m square by 2 i z i for deflection what we have done we have considered as I mentioned for deflection it is vertical upward deflection and in that direction p is applied. So, there is no problem we are simply directly con considering derivative of partial derivative of that energy and we get that 1 by E i equals to 0 to L m x del m x del p d x. So, uh, while we while we substitute this values m x p x is the derivative value this x and uh, this is m x and then if we integrate it uh, we get that p l cube by thrice e i and m l square by twice e i is the deflection. So, uh, if we solve without the m we generally get this value and this is the contribution of m that is quite clear. So, for the slope before we go for the slope uh, better we try to draw it. So, this is the slope we are trying to find out and this is the deflection what we are trying to find out and uh, then we, we see what is done here. The Op to obtain the slope at the end, uh, we calculate the partial derivative of the strain energy with respect to the couple m, which gives theta equals to del u del m and uh, m x del m del m uh, del m x del m is there, and that gives us since this is uh, there is only one will come, so no point, nothing is mentioned here, only m x is present here and that is integrated and uh, it gives that uh, L square by 2 P L square by 2 i z i m L by E i. So, with that uh, um, example we, we conclude uh, today's lecture uh, of Castigliano's theorem and uh, as I have suggested already you please better try to solve the other problems what are covered in the last uh, examples uh, in last lectures to solve these uh, equations. So, next uh, uh, slide is a simple repetition of the um, references and uh, with after that we have one slide what we have uh, learned today that is Castigliano's theorem uh, that also comes in the energy method and we will follow in next class the Rayleigh Ridge method and I thank you for attending this class. Next class we will learn the Rayleigh Ridge method. Thank you.